y'all, man. <clears throat> Back at it one more time. About to add another uh, video to our stand-up special Tuesday. And uh, yes, very happy about that. So let's continue on. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video. And uh, back for another part of this uh, stand-up special Tuesday that we got going on here. And we're going to um, continue on with Roy Wood Jr. today. All right. Well, um, we got into part one of his uh, comedy special titled No One Loves You. That's what we on here. And uh, yeah, man, he started off by getting into some issues that we got going on in the in the country, you know, or the world. I don't know if we could say both, you know, specifically this country. And uh, yeah, he was talking about the national anthem, you know, he was talking about uh, uh, police and he was talking about uh, uh, teachers and uh, police jobs and all that, the money situation, all that good stuff, man. There's a lot of stuff that he tackled in the first part of this one. And he made a lot of sense with it all. You know, I'm not going to say he didn't. Uh, some things that I would do differently just because I got a twisted mind like that. But uh, I very much enjoyed what he got to so far in part one. And we're going to get into part two today. So yes, we're going to get into it. And uh, as I said in the first part, this special was uh, uploaded for our viewing pleasure because of the very beautiful, kind, and uh, very, very generous person, Miss Ema Catherine Maya. Thank you so much uh, for uploading this one for us. Uh, like I said, uh, this will be the second special that I've gotten into from uh, Miss Ema Catherine Meyer. And uh, yeah, man, uh, she knows how to pick them, you know. I didn't get too many views on the Ron Funches one, but that don't matter. I still got my laugh on in the, in the end, you know, for myself, that's all that matters. But yeah, man, um, I want to continue to uh, make sure you guys are entertained. So yes, thank you very much again, Miss Ema Catherine Meyer. We're going to get into this one, like I said. Roy Wood Jr. with uh, No One Loves You, part two of this stand-up comedy special. And if you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Keep everything going. All right. So, yeah, continuing on, man. Um, I like, you know, when comedians get into uh, very serious issues, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't like when they dwell on it, but at the same time, I still got to get my laugh on with uh, any type of material that comes up in this world, man. That's what we're here for, you know what I'm talking about? Let's go ahead and get into it, man. Let's do this. Roy Wood Jr. with No One Loves You. Part two of this stand-up comedy special right here on ADB TV. Let's get back to it. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's get situated with this one here. And here we go. But in the meantime, we protest. We do what we can to affect some change. We go out, stand tall, which I gotta say, thank you, white people. Thank y'all for showing up a little more to the protest. It's been nice these last couple years, seeing more white folks out there. <laughs> you know, because as a black person, it's nice to see somebody else cover your shift. It's a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your you know what I'm saying? You be getting ready to go to the march, you see all these white people on TV, I'm like, shit, they got this one. <laughs> Stay at the crib, man. And go walk all the white people like that. Oh, man. Some of y'all over protest. Y'all need to scale it back. Yeah. I was just about to doing too much that. at the marches. And I know why you're over protesting, because you're determined to show the world that you aren't the other people. I understand that, and that's fine, but some of the stuff y'all doing is out of line, and it's coming back on black people. Oh, okay. It's people showing up to protest, throwing piss balloons. <laughs> what? Yeah, throwing piss balloons at Nazis. <laughs> which, which is hilarious. It's okay, funny. Okay, just making sure he was laughing. Wrong. It's funny to throw some piss, but it ain't a solution-oriented activity. Ah. Uh. And most people at the march are out there for solutions. Once you add piss to the conversation, Ugh. the conversation stops. Okay. And don't get me wrong, I respect you. I respect your effort, just scale it back. You gotta respect anybody showing up to a protest with a bag of piss. That's dedication. <laughs> okay. That's at least three days planning. Oh, three days, huh? Because you're throwing piss. That's not a spur of the moment projectile. 
Oh. You got to drink water for a couple days. You got to buy party supplies. You need a funnel. You're eating asparagus. You're trying to get everything <laughs> perfect. <laughs> asparagus. You know, that asparagus set it off. It looks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He ain't lying about that. This is oh the rule of goodness. thumb. This, this is the rule of thumb for protest behavior. If Dr. King and them didn't do it in the 60s, you ain't gotta do it now. Okay, you, you ain't gotta do okay. all that extra. Pull it back, y'all, pull it And if there's anybody back. that would have been justified in throwing piss, it's some civil rights soldiers from back in the day. Because they was the ones getting done way dirtier than most protests now. That's true. They was getting bit by dogs, chased home, house burned, fire hose. I'm shocked Dr. King didn't turn to Ralph Abernathy. Give me one of them piss balloons, Abernathy. We gotta throw them at the oppressors. Give me another piss balloon. That's real, though. You're a fool for that. <laughs> Not the piss. Can over protests. Yes. Calm down. That's they had a 10 day march not too long ago. A 10 day march. It's too long. <laughs> okay, too long. A week and a half of just walking, just walking for a week and a half. And they call me thinking, I'm going to roll with the, hey man, we're going to go down to D.C. We're marching for 10 days from Virginia. Can we count on you? I said, no, you cannot. <laughs> no. You cannot count on me. <laughs> I'm not marching nowhere for no 10 days. Mm -mm. I'll click the link. I'll donate some money. You can go march on my behalf. Okay. I'm not walking nowhere for no 10 damn days. And what make you think any black person got 10 vacation days <laughs> to burn just walking? <laughs> we ain't got no 10 days. Not even for freedom. We ain't got 10 days. Nope, nope, nope. Look at the civil rights movement. Most of the key moments you can name in the civil rights movement, most of them was three days or less. Get in, get out. Keep your job on Monday. <laughs> okay. Selma to Montgomery, that was two days. Mm. Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, the iconic I Have a Dream speech was one day. It wasn't no week-long extravaganza. I know you see the picture, you see all these black people marching. It was one day. He didn't even do two shows. He did a matinee <laughs> and was out. Deuces. <laughs> get in, get out. Oh, I have man. a dream, the mountaintop, one day we gonna get to the and I gotta roll. Let's get it, Abernathy. <laughs> we out of here. Secure the bag, Abernathy. Give me one more of them piss balloons. <laughs> 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 oh, no, man. Oh, man. These protests, though. You want to do something really meaningful, go to a protest that has nothing to do with you personally. That's what we're seeing more of. I did that for the first time. I did that for the first time. I went to a Muslim ban protest, man. Banning the Muslims, I went out there. This is what they don't tell you when you go to a protest that ain't got shit to do with you. You can just leave whenever you want. That's true. That's true. I never knew that was an option because I only go to black pro I'm from Birmingham. All we do is go to black protests. And when you at a black protest, you there. There's no leaving. <laughs> you think black church long, go to a black protest. Oh, damn. Oh, man. Better pack a snack and a diaper. <laughs> Ain't no sneaking off. I just left the Muslim man. They waved. See you later. Thank you. I tried to tiptoe away from a black protest. I got two steps away from the group. They said, where you going, brother? The struggle is this way. <laughs> My bad, fam. That's on me. Where are you going? I thought we was going to make that left. <laughs> We're making the left. Okay, the struggles. Okay, let's go this way. Okay, okay. yes. <laughs> Damn. Oh, man, that's funny. You got to respect anybody that's at somebody else's protest. You see a lot of that with black folks, man. Black women, man. Black women just be supporting folks, bro. It's amazing. 
I'll tell you right now, you see a black woman at your march, get them a hug and $20. <laughs> and cover their Uber ride home. Uber black. <laughs> Uber black. Because <laughs> black people will be perfectly justified in not showing up to anybody else's march. We ain't, we ain't got to show up to your shit. If you'd have listened to us, you wouldn't even be marching, because it happened to us first. Half the stuff you marching about happened to black people first. We was trying to tell you. <sighs> you see a black person at a march that doesn't have anything to do with them, that is a gracious, giving soul. Because black people would be perfectly justified in only tending to issues affecting the black community. We could fill our calendar just walking for black issues from crime to poverty to unemployment to home loans. Like, we ain't got the time, man, to be helping everybody. So when people make the time, that's a blessing. Why do you think black superheroes only save black people? <laughs> <laughs> They're busy. They ain't got the time to save the rest of the world. <sighs> that's a luxury that only white superheroes have. My neighborhood's great. What else is going on out here in the world? Like, <laughs> black superheroes got to focus on they block. I watch Luke Cage. Luke Cage is my show. Love Luke Cage. Luke Cage, if you don't know nothing about comic books or superheroes, Luke Cage is this TV show about an indestructible black man. The brother's bulletproof, super strength. He'll throw a, a truck at you like a football. You would think with his resume, he would be somewhere with Iron Man trying to save the universe. This motherfucker never leaves Harlem. <laughs> he ain't got the time. Uh. Whole TV show, eight blocks. That's all it is. Damn, that's it, huh? Damn. Luke Cage ain't got time to be saving everybody. He ain't even got time to go to Hell's Kitchen to help Daredevil. That's how busy <laughs> Luke Cage is. Can't even take the one line. I ain't got no time, man. <laughs> Luke Cage don't care about the rest of the world. Luke Cage is like, look, until Thanos come by the Apollo Theater, oh, that ain't none of my business. Sweet Christmas. Dust that off, man. It's not that black people don't care about what you're going through. I promise you, we care. It's just some of us don't have the time. Shit, black folks ain't even got the strength to help other black people. Black Panther didn't even have time to help the rest of Africa. <laughs> That's how busy he was. Oh, hell no. All them powers, all them weapons, you telling me Black Panther couldn't swing by South Africa and free Mandela real quick? <laughs> he didn't have the time. That would have been he nice, He was though. only worried about Wakanda. That's what half the movie was about. Wakanda? Half the movie Black Panther was about him using his powers to help the rest of the world. He had to get his ass whooped by his cousin before he would even consider it. Damn. The whole movie, Black Panther, brother, we cannot concern ourselves with the rest of the world. Wakanda is what... Stop up! <laughs> I have reconsidered my position. <laughs> Now, if you excuse me, I will go drink more of my magical grape soda. <laughs> Let's go. It's not that we don't care. <laughs> we don't have the time. Magical grape soda, that's a good line. I like that. Why do you think you don't see Samuel L. Jackson in half these Avengers movies? Oh, hell no. We're fucking busy. <laughs> You ever notice that? Half of these Avenger movies, Samuel L. Jackson don't be in the movie half the time. Sam Jackson appears at the very end of the movie. All this shit that went on the whole movie. And then here comes Samuel L. Jackson at the very end. Good job, motherfuckers. <laughs> you did it. Here's your next mission. There's a god from another universe can destroy the world with the snap of a finger. Good luck with that. I gotta go to a protest. Police just shot a 40-year-old eighth grader. <laughs> there you go again. That 40-year-old eighth grader. <laughs> oh, man. Boycotts now. Boycotts left and right. Boycott, boycott, boycott. You mess around, don't get on the internet one day, you miss the, the new boycott. And then people attack you. They attack you for something you just honestly didn't know nothing about because you hadn't been on the internet today. 
That's how I found out about the chicken sandwich and the gay marriage. That's how I found out about that. On the sidewalk. You know, I'm on the sidewalk, I'm chilling. Didn't know that there was an issue with the gay marriage and I'm just sitting there eating my Christian chicken sandwich. <laughs> Christian, huh? Delicious. I'm eating my Christian chicken sandwich. And two gay men walk by and they just look at me, look at the sandwich, and one of them goes, no, and just walk. <laughs> and that pissed me off. Because I thought he was fat shaming me. I'm like, hold on, bro, you ain't going to fat shame. So I chased him. I chased this gay man. <laughs> and I got in his face with my chicken sandwich. I said, nom, nom, nom. Oh, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I didn't understand what that gesture meant at the time. Uh -huh. I just didn't know. You know you do better. That's how it go. At this point, the boycotting, man, shit, man, we, we need, we need an app. An app. That's the only way to keep up with all these boycotts. These boycotts be coming down so damn fast, you can't keep up with all these damn boycotts, man. You just need an app, just your phone, you just punch in your political beliefs, and then anytime you get too close to one of them stores, your phone just goes, uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd pay two dollars for that. Oh man. Food boycotts are the toughest for me. <laughs> I don't know which boycott y'all go through, but everybody in this room and had one, at least one thing, when they called the boycott, you was like. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be me, yeah, it would. <sighs> oh, yeah, I know, I know. I know. The rest of them boycotts, I can do no problem. You tell me not to buy a shirt from a store, cool. You say don't watch the NFL, cool. I'm a Dolphins fan. I ain't missing nothing. So <laughs> that's easy for me. Oh. But when you say food, that's a whole nother world. Yeah, There's only is. one company that I think makes food good enough to maybe, maybe navigate outrage. It's one company I think might be close to being boycott proof. It's McDonald's. Oh, okay. McDonald's is delicious. I'm sorry. I know some of y'all got money now. You eat hummus, so you got bread. Whatever. I hate, I hate hummus. But don't act Ugh. like McDonald's wasn't the sustenance of your childhood, you ungrateful asshole. <laughs> like Ronald McDonald ain't have your back. McDonald's is delicious. This is how good, this is how delicious McDonald's is. This is how delicious McDonald's is. McDonald's just recently started giving us all white meat chicken nuggets. At no point did we stop to ask what the nuggets was made of before that. That's a good We point. just kept eating them. It's all white meat now? Oh, shit, yeah. That's good right there. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum, yum. McDonald's is delicious. Oh, that's the end of it, huh? All right. Let's get our dance on one more time. Yeah, that was my bad robot impression right there. <laughs> All right, man, that's going to be a wrap on part two. Man, well, you know, continuing on with the good material, man. He's tapping into some more stuff, you know. You know, it's a good thing that uh, stuff like this can be made funny. Otherwise, I'd be bored as hell every single time, man. But yeah, okay. <laughs> that was uh, Roy Wood Jr. with uh, No One Loves You, part two of this comedy special. Well, let's go ahead and unpack some more, shall we? Um, first and foremost, uh, I don't get down with any protests at all. It's not my thing, okay? And the reason is, is that I don't know if I've said it sometimes in the past, but... When you're a mixed race person, man, there's no side you can take and you can't have your own side because then both sides just want to kill you. So I don't care about protesting. And if I were to protest, I would protest the wrong way, just like my man's here was talking about, man. I would do everything aggressive, ignorant, violent, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's just, you know, I'm one of those people who believe that you don't you don't march, you don't you don't protest, you don't boycott, you know, and all this stuff to get things done, man. 
All it, all it is is just people whining and complaining and nothing ever gets done. You know what I mean? It might seem sincere, you know what I mean? But it just doesn't uh, equal um, a solution. You know what I mean? There's no real solution. You know, when I look back on history and I hear all the stuff that went on with racism and, 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 and uh, sexism and all that stuff, you know, it's just like, hmm, wow, all that stuff happened back in the day, huh? Okay, how's it going now? It still exists. <laughs> There's nobody's done anything about it right, you know what I mean? Men, obviously, have not done a lot of things right for a very long time. And now it hasn't even been that long since women have had their rights to do whatever they want. And uh, yeah, y'all ain't been doing a good job either. <laughs> and I ain't afraid to admit it neither. You know, I just, <clears throat> whenever you give people license to do something with no progress or no solution, is this gonna take you farther and farther back? You know what I mean? Like, I remember when all the Black Lives Matter protests were going on and stuff like that, but <clears throat> I was never gonna partake in that. Not because I don't care about black people, I mix with black, you know? But the thing is, is that uh, you're gonna see all the stuff that's been going on, fights and all the all the looting and all that stuff like that, you know? There was a lot of people, you know, who got their businesses broken into who ain't done a damn thing wrong, but no one's talking about that. You know, well, not as often as I would like anyway, personally, but. Yeah, man, I ain't down with that stuff, man. It's just like, just do the right thing, you know? I mean, I know that's very difficult to do because, you know, the right thing isn't trending, you know what I mean? It ain't the big thing on the on the, on on your on your Facebook timeline or your Twitter feed or whatever. It's doing the right thing is not fun. <laughs> yeah, people like to talk about it, but nobody likes to do anything about it, you know what I mean? Um, it just bothers me so much <clears throat> that... You know, I, you know, I was listening to what he said in this one, man. You know, like everybody has time to do something, you know, but everybody always want to, um, everybody got to go to work. You know what I mean? You got to, you go replenish your fluid. You got to eat a good meal. You got to get some rest. You know what I mean? And obviously going out and doing all this stuff on, on, on an everyday basis is very uh, strenuous <laughs> and very stressful, I imagine. So nah, man, I don't, I don't partake in it. I always hope that something gets better. You know, I, I do my best, <laughs> obviously, to treat every everybody with respect and dignity and uh always just try to impress you know that upon everyone I meet you know every time people talk to me they they may not get anything out of it per se but one thing they're not going to get is nonsense out of me because the one thing that I like to say is that <clears throat> I'm not an expert in anything other than just being me, you know, and that's what a lot of people are experts in too, but they always want to spew their bullshit to whoever else would listen, and next thing you know, they're following the footsteps of an ignorant fool who don't know what he talking about, or she, and then, you know, you just got this circular, you know, uh, roll of drama going on, you know, and I don't, I don't stand for that, you know, but, um, you know, it's just like, uh, I've never, uh, he was talking about uh, Luke Cage, was that his name? I've never seen that. I don't get down with uh, all these movies and stuff like that. I mean, <clears throat> to be honest with you, if they would stick to like keep them, keeping them all separate or whatever, maybe I can get behind it a little bit. I like the original Iron Mans with, uh, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. in them and all that. But once they started doing all the Avengers stuff, man, I just, I just took a hard pass on everything. I have not seen any of these movies. I haven't even seen Black Panther, you know what I mean? It's on my list, you know, but I just haven't gotten to it, you know? Because no matter what you watch these days or what you listen to, everybody's always going to, people that you know at least, will always try to attach some sort of deeper thing to it instead of just enjoying what's there, you know what I mean? I like to just enjoy the world, you know? I mean, granted, I do my little, my fair bit of complaining a bit too sometimes, man, but I just don't like to, I don't like to drag things on, you know? You know, um, I still have grudges in my heart, you know, a little bitterness from, from, from the past and all that. But, you know, damn, man, I'm trying my hardest to get rid of that because it don't make your life any better. But um, aside from that, man, <clears throat> I would have to, I mean, this is all, this is comedy and this is just jokes, you know. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that comedians actually mean to the heart when they say it. They just have to make it funny, you know. But I think everybody has time to do something. It's just a question of whether or not you want to, you know you know, put forth the effort and um, accept the fact that there might be something that goes directly against you at the end of that whole thing, man. It's it's a sad reality, but it is a reality. And what the hell is that noise? Go away, man. I'm busy here. <laughs> but um, you know what? 
uh, I have time to do a lot of things too, you know what I mean? But I just don't want to because I already know it's probably going to get me killed, you know, because I just don't, um, I've lived a life where it's very easy to spot nonsense, you know, from like, you know, a hundred miles away. You know, I see it happening. I feel what the outcome is going to be. And I'm just like, I'll pass on that. No, no, no. As far as the boycotting goes, it's like, it's no different from like cancel culture and all this stuff, man. I, I don't understand why anyone thinks that they can just, you know, decide who is going to be able to live a normal life anymore just because they made a mistake this or whatever. Let nature take its course, people, all right? You don't have to get in your feelings about everything, okay? I know that because I get in my feelings sometimes and um, I got people in my life that know when to tell me, yo, yo, Eddie B, shut up, man. Just shut up. And I'll be like, ah, damn, you right. Okay, I got to shut up now. <laughs> and I'll just move on with my day, you know? But, you know, it's just, it's a sad thing, you know, to come to terms with, you know? But like I said, man, I, I would not do anything protesting or boycotting legit. I would, I, I would blow it up. I would be loud and obnoxious about it. So just like, don't give me a credit card. Don't put me in a protest, okay? It's going to end badly. But um, what else did he say? You know, one thing I will uh, include before I, um, by, before I wrap this up is that uh, he was talking about uh, businesses that could avoid any type of whatever. I used to work at McDonald's, y'all, and I don't eat McDonald's anymore. And then saying that I ain't going to trash McDonald's, okay? I, I grew up on it, too. Like he said, you know, you know I used to, after church, uh, my pops would always take us to McDonald's, you know what I mean? And we had, I used to always get me a big and tasty. Or a, a double quarter pounder. Uh, occasionally, I would get a Big Mac, you know, and uh, and then uh, always love McFlurries and all that stuff, man. But after working there and seeing what can go on in certain branches, I was like, uh, no, sir, I'm gonna have to pass on that one too. I mean, don't get it twisted. I'll still eat a couple of breakfast items from McDonald's, man. But as far as anything else, hard pass. But um, yeah, man, I just um, I really do believe that people really need to stop thinking that their individual standpoint on things is like the only important thing. It isn't, okay? If you're, if you're gonna contrib uh, contribute positively, I'm not gonna say don't protest, I'm just not gonna do it. But if you're gonna do it, do it right, okay? And if you ain't gonna do it, stay your ass home. Nobody need to hear nothing from you, right? And as far as anything else going on, man, stop trying to boycott everything, stop trying to cancel everything, and uh, just be responsible, man. I love how people say they want peace or they want this, but then they uh, they have to get even first, you know, vengeance is first. <laughs> yeah, man, um, I had a lot of that mentality as well, you know, it didn't get me anywhere, trust me, I got stories for the future for y'all, but uh, yeah, man, uh, I like what he's talking about with this one, man, and plus I gotta watch uh, some of these movies, at least some of them, you know, not all of them, but yeah, man, like, um, I think everyone, I think, you know, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, I'm not telling y'all to do nothing, okay? It's not my job, but I think everyone just really needs to do this little thing called what he said in the beginning. Pull it back, y'all. Just chill out on certain things. We don't gotta go over the top about everything because the nonsense in this world will show its true colors if everybody just, you know, stays uh, a solid, uh, even-keeled course of just being civil, being respectful, being kind to others, you know? I know that's a tall order because everybody got in it first, you know what I mean? But... You know, it's just, uh, yeah, handle business the right way, man. Don't be stupid, you know. <laughs> That's what I tell my stepdaughter, Jada, every time she comes to visit and then she goes back to college, I give her a big hug and I just go, all right, love you, babe. Don't be stupid out there <laughs> because it's very easy to get caught up in that as uh, everyone can clearly see with all the crazy shit going on in the news. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off right there, man. Thank you one more time to Miss Ema Catherine Maya for uploading this special for our viewing pleasure. Like I said, you are an amazing person. I very much appreciate you. And uh, yeah, man, I, um, I, I like what I'm hearing from this dude so far. I don't agree with everything he's saying, but you know, like I said, being civil with all this other stuff that's going on in the world, just because you don't like something, you don't gotta trash it. You know what I mean? You, just because something's not making you laugh doesn't mean you gotta heckle or something like that if you happen to be at a comedy show. You know, but just, um, I like the majority of what he says. You know, he makes a good point, you know, with a lot of the things he talks about. And he knows how to make it funny. You know what I mean? You know? Um, I want these issues to go away, but it's not going to happen in our lifetime. Maybe the next three or four lifetimes. Who knows, man? But yeah, man, as long as we uh, get this one little simple thing in our heads, man. Don't hate people, you know, without knowledge of something. And don't even hate it all, really. You know, just like dislike it and don't want any part of it. And uh, live and let live. Like I always keep saying, you know, live and let live.
Why can't we do that, man? Nah, we got to keep running our mouths first. I know it's a sickness. All right, man, I'm going to go ahead and I'll wrap this one up. One more time. Uh, Roy Wood Jr. with uh, No One Loves You, part two of this stand-up comedy special. And if you like that reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Keep everything going, like I always say. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, part two in the books, man. Um, Roy Wood Jr., I've seen him on a couple of scattered things before I got to this one. You know, he's a funny dude. You know, he's got some jokes to him and all that good stuff. But this one, um, I think that, you know, he's really like uh, one of these comedians who likes to make people aware of certain things. But, you know, he knows how to put his little humorous spin on it, man. And that's always a plus. You know, every time I'm around people in my life, I'm always trying to be as goofy and funny as possible because that's what everyone knows me to be. Um, my serious attitude, you know, and my mature attitude is mixed in with that goofy humorous side, you know, but, you know, not everyone likes it. People like you just be stern and serious about issues. Nope, not me. I'm going to make a joke out of it every time because if you see me get angry, oh, jeez, you're going to see me on the news and it ain't going to be pretty, man. Yeah, I have an experience not with being on the news, but going crazy, man. Wasn't a good look for me. So, yeah, this is going to be ADB TV signing off. One more again here. Uh, part two of this stand-up comedy special in the books, like I said, from Roy Wood Jr. And uh, he's really uh, hitting it on the nail with a lot of things he's talking about. Take notes, man. Uh, don't take comedy too literally, but at the same time, take away the messages, the, the right messages that, that come from these uh, comedians, male and female, you know, because they got a lot of uh, real stuff to, you know, to bring to our attention. You know, we just got to know what to take seriously and know what to laugh at. You know what I mean? One can only hope for such a thing. So, yeah, thank y'all for tuning in one more time to this one, man. I had fun getting to it. Um, I got two more parts to go uh, for this one. And um, uh, like I said, you know, I'm going to keep reserving this day for stand-up specials, man, part by part. And if uh, something that you guys want to see that, uh, that I haven't seen or whatever, drop some suggestions, you know. I already got a couple more specials in line after this one wraps. So, yeah, man, keep it all coming. Trying to keep this shit going and uh, trying to keep having fun, you know. That's what we're here for, and uh, that's what we're going to continue to do. So, yes, like I said, love and appreciate y'all, and uh, keep it all coming, man. I, 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 keep, I keep thinking that, uh, you know, he's going to tap into something later on in this special that's really going to hit me. You know, it's only two parts down. Usually, you know, when, as far as specials go, you know, the craziest stuff and the funniest stuff comes at the second half. So we got two parts down. We got the uh, the second half coming up next Tuesday. So, yeah, thank y'all for tuning in one more time. And uh, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.